But on the 7th of November, my airplane was hit and it blew into three pieces and it was toppling, topsy-turvy. And I knew there's smoke in the cockpit, the stick is frozen aft right, it's a two-place airplane. At that time, I was in the pilot in the back seat because I was right out of flight school and I had a captain in the front seat. We both could flew the, fly the airplane and we both flew it, but he was the senior guy. But we couldn't communicate. I knew I had to get out. My mind is calculating and all my training came back. And y'all do a lot of training. Training is so wonderful. It saved my life. In the heat of that moment, I was not afraid. I wasn't worried about anything. I was following my procedures. And so I immediately knew I had to get my butt in the seat before I ejected or I was probably going to break my neck or back because I had negative Gs and I was up in the cockpit. So I got down. It just happened. We flipped over again. We were tumbling. We flipped over again, and my butt hit the seat, and I pulled the handle, and out we went, and that wonderful Martin Baker Jackson seat all worked. Bam, bam, bam. And in less than two seconds, everything was done for me, and it popped me out of the seat and activated my parachute, and I was floating down. On the ground, there was a lot of shooting going on. I could hear the bullets whizzing by. I activated my beeper. I made a decision where I was going to land, whether or not to deploy my right life raft. I'm just going like clockwork. Did my parachute landing fall, just like the sergeants had taught us. Had no real bad injuries or anything. I had some pretty bad cuts in my lip and my ne neck and chin, but no real serious injuries. They surrounded me uh, almost immediately. I called for, when I got on the ground, I got rid of my parachute and called, jumped down an old bomb crater and called the uh, wingman to start strafing. I'm headed, I'm gonna head for the river. Well, they told me after the war that we were too close to strike. We were afraid we'd hit you. And so guys started, the militia guys about 20 yards away started popping up, three or four of them popping up with their rifles out of the bushes. And we've been told that these militia guys, you know, they're probably going to capture you. If you ever get shot down, they're rookies. They're not well trained. They don't know how to handle prisoners of war. You know, they, they don't know what, to, they're just not that well trained. So I pulled out my 38 Smith and Wesson. I said, I'll, I'll scare these guys off. I had two rounds of tracer ammo and three rounds of ball in this six shot, one, one empty uh, chamber. And I just held up my pistol like this and I started motioning like, you know, get out of here, get out of here. And I fired a round right over that tracer, right over their head. Those guys did not flinch. I don't know if because they were terrified or because they were brave, but they didn't flinch. They just went like this. And one of them had this little comic book like thing. It's about this big and it opened up. And one of them is standing there like this. Sharinda, no die. Sharinda, no die. And I decided right then that it was probably time for me to surrender. So I did.